presence. Oh, Bashaka Balada Baka Bragade Balados. Emmanuel, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worship him from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. God in the midst of his people. Mighty. We hail you. Most high. We hail. We hail you. Most high. I hail.
be compared with your majesty. Heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Who art thou? Who art man that thou art mindful of him? the son of man that thou visitest him. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and crowned him with glory. There is no one. There is no one. Worship us. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. It lives in me. Go ahead and prophesy and say the same power that conquered the grave, that conquered death, that conquered sickness, that conquered failure. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Alléluia. Alléluia. Aren't you glad that we're not ordinary people? We may talk like the men in the system. We may breathe in and out. But we don't have the same life, brothers and sisters. There is a divine life. Jesus transferred a divine life said in John chapter 10 verse 10 he said the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy but I am come not to give you a religion not to make you Christians I am come that ye may have life so we a quality of life that has not been known a life that is superior to this realm John chapter 3 verse 31 says he that cometh from above whoever possesses this divine life is practically literally above all hallelujah so tonight we're going to sing one more song crying that the lord will open the gates and the doors of revelation without his spirit we are only noise makers here hallelujah it's only by his spirit hallelujah never forget in your life in your ministry in your business in your endeavor that outside of the spirit of God you have no existence hallelujah open up the gates open up the door it's a very simple song Open up the gate. Hallelujah. Just hold on. I want to teach you the song for those of you who don't know. You hear the worshipers sing it once and then we'll follow. Hallelujah. It's a very simple song, prophetic song. It says, Open up the gates, the gates of revelation, the gates of insight in the spirit. Open up the gates. Open up the door. Now just hear the worshippers sing it once and then we'll Open join in concert. Open up the gate. Open up the gate. Open up the door. Open up the door. It's a pretty song. Simple song. Powerful Open song. Sing. Contains deep revelation that cannot be exhausted in this realm. There are gates and doors where the archives and mysteries of the spirit are hidden. We confess that we are helpless without you we declare our inability to help ourselves Lord we are confident that by your spirit you will communicate deep things into our hearts Lord our hearts are open tonight bless our hearts In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Walk up to ten people. Tell them it's good to see your face again.
Acts chapter 4. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. What an honor to be in his presence. For the word of the Lord says, in his presence there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and ye shall know the truth. Hallelujah. And he said, the truth that you know will make you make you free hallelujah and we thank God for his grace he's building us equipping us by the power of his spirit like my brother rightly said this is a training ground where God is building and equipping sons and daughters those who will be the custodians of the next revival the spirit if you believe that say amen, amen. so thank you Lord Jesus appreciate the worshipers great people Acts chapter 4 verse 16 or oh, let's start from verse 15 and when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves 16 saying what shall we do to this man it's a question for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all those who dwell in Jerusalem the last phrase and we cannot deny it what shall we do to this man for that indeed a notable miracle a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all those who are in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it look up tonight God is going to be challenging us very briefly hallelujah on the need to stand out as beacons of light and begin to manifest the kingdom the life the power the glory the audacity and the grace that flows from the kingdom that we represent hallelujah hallelujah now this was an interesting story because it was an event that followed the healing of the man at the beautiful gate hallelujah when he was healed by peter and john it stirred up controversy in jerusalem and when he got into the temple the scribes and the Pharisees suddenly saw the man he was sitting in an obvious position the Bible tells us that he had a spot at the beautiful gate and every time people pass to pray they would drop arms hallelujah and at a certain time during the hour of prayer the Bible says Peter and John went to pray and seeing this man he was begging for arms and Peter said look on us the Bible says he looked at them steadfastly expecting to receive something and he said silver and gold have i not but such as i have give unto you in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk hallelujah and then the bible says peter reached out and grabbed him and he leaping stood and he ran into the temple jumping and leaping and rejoicing and there was so much controversy and on account of this they had to hold a meeting hallelujah because the apostles were now becoming obvious threats to their environment hallelujah and the scribes and the pharisees felt threatened by the presence of certain people although they were not educated as it were they were not learned people hallelujah and they had to call them over to the jerusalem council the council of religious people isn't it amazing that when jesus walked upon the earth he never had problem with sinners and unbelievers his problem was with religious people hallelujah and when the saints the first fruit of the finished work of Christ walked upon the earth they didn't have a problem with demons and devils hallelujah their major problem was among religious people it's amazing how religion can resist the things that the Holy Spirit is doing they were men and women full of human understanding but had no comprehension of the precepts of the spirit 
for you to be a scribe and a pharisee you had to know the five books of moses the torah the pentateuch you had to know it off heart and moses in that prophesied and says a prophet shall god send to you was prophetically speaking about jesus christ the messiah and when jesus walked upon the earth although they had that in their head they still persecuted him until they killed him that's why jesus speaking in john 6 verse 63 said the flesh profited nothing he said it's the spirit that quickened the flesh profited nothing he said the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and paul extending that statement said the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit he said for they are spiritually designed you don't use your five senses to understand the things of the spirit because it gets to a plane where every revelation you are encountering will wrestle every sense of logic that you have so you must be able to ascend the heel of the lord whether or not your mind understands that's why we call it faith hallelujah that our life and our walk in this realm is absolutely hinged on the integrity of the one we are following and not necessarily on our degree of comprehension on what he's doing hallelujah and so he said a notable miracle i'm going to speak very briefly on what i titled notable manifestation of sons notable manifestation of sons we've spoken a lot about the manifestation of sons hallelujah romans chapter 8 from verse 18 says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god hallelujah and the next verse says for the whole creation was subject to vanity not willingly but by him who subjected the same in hope talking about adam the first man handing over the rightful keys of dominion to satan hallelujah and so the earth groans and travails waiting for the manifestation of sins i need you to understand that all through bible history the only way that men give glory to god is when the deeds of god is seen and expressed in the eyes of men are you listening to me when no matter how supernatural a thing is if it ends in the secret god cannot be glorified are you listening to me because for god to be glorified men must be the ones to give him glory are you following me and therefore they must see and understand the goodness and the deeds of god and then as a response to what they see they will give him glory and give him praise and so when i talk about notable the word notable connotes being obvious being significant being outstanding worthy of note the bible makes us to understand in acts chapter 4 verse 16 the apostles had been doing um great things while jesus was around the bible records that when he sent the 70 hallelujah that they went and came back and said even the demons are subject to us through thy name so it was not exactly their first time of experiencing the manifestation of the power of god however the bible says this was a different one and what made it different it wasn't because the miracle was new it was because it was notable say after me notable it was notable done before everyone undeniable irrefutable beyond argument hallelujah a notable miracle and when the scribes and the pharisees gathered themselves together because they said through which name did you cast this out and peter began to preach a sermon and they brought themselves together they said brothers and sisters oh, well no sisters they're brothers praise god for ladies how come there were no ladies when they were conspiring to do all these bad things 
ladies that should be a thumbs up so are we agreeing that men are the cause of come on remember if <laughs> hallelujah remember jezebel remember the mystery babylon was not a man was a woman upon the horse can i continue okay remember the mother of jesus <laughs> hallelujah okay that aside let's continue the bible says that a notable miracle although they they didn't believe god they didn't love the things of god there was no human way they would prove that this was not so hallelujah no table manifestations of songs the bible makes us to understand that special miracles he called them special miracles they were not regular miracles special miracles were wrought through the hands of paul such that handkerchiefs and aprons were brought together the bible says just leaving his body devils demons were casted out special miracles the manifestation of songs will not create the kind of ripple effect that the kingdom desires until everything about our lives become notable the secret of expressing glory to god through our life is that everything about our lives will be reckoned to be notable the bible tells us that many men live long however there was a man that caught the attention in the bible hallelujah what was his name bible students sorry some people are saying mel mel what hallelujah who is the oldest man in the bible come on how old expo praise god now several people lived long but how come we don't preach about the other people that live long something was notable about the longevity of methuselah the bible tells us that there were many wise men i mean the spirit of wisdom and creativity in exodus 31 rested upon bezalel but the bible tells us that there was something notable about the wisdom of solomon it was so notable that queen sheba had to come from the east to reckon with the fact that there was something notable about this man and the bible says when she came and saw the splendor of the palace and the manifestation of the artistry the creativity and the wisdom of the spirit the bible testifies that there was no more breath in her and she said half of this was not told me notable manifestations of songs hallelujah notable there were many men who were men of faith in the bible how come every time we talk about an icon of faith we suddenly move to the father abraham notable manifestations the bible says that a notable miracle happened and as a result because it was notable if it was just a miracle they would try to deny it but they said a notable miracle everybody saw this man crippled and then one moment they saw him standing they couldn't deny it they couldn't say it was stage managed for he had been there a long time the notable manifestation of the sons will begin to silence the systems of the world you know why god is allowing them to see all the evil and chaos because when the sons manifest it will be notable traceable impact that they can see and know that at a time t there was darkness and chaos why do you think the bible tells us that there was darkness and then god said let there be light that that statement would have been skipped away in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and god said let there be light it would still make sense why did god have to contrast the darkness the chaos and the light it's god's desire that we not only manifest as songs of light 
but enter a realm called notable manifestation undeniable manifestation unarguable manifestation of sons hallelujah when Jesus walked upon the earth the scribes and the Pharisees had been teaching you must understand they were learned people humanly speaking they were absolutely intelligent but for the first time they had a man preach and his context and expression was notable and the people took note they said who is this from whence comes this man who is this notable grace and the bible says he taught as one with authority and not as the scribes there was something notable in his life when he began to move there was something about his love it was notable hallelujah and when he climbed upon the mountain the bible says about five thousand people aside women and children followed him why because his manifestation was notable i needed to understand that john had manifestations hallelujah but there was something notable say after me notable obvious something conspicuous something um undeniable and the unbelievers testified they said we cannot deny it we cannot deny it this is too notable there's no way we are going to try to cook up a story to stop God from receiving glory is notable God intends that your life becomes a notable sign and a notable wonder such that no matter what angle people come they will say this life is too notable we cannot but deny the hand of God we cannot but deny the favor of God there were many people who worked in the ministry of helps and hospitality but the Bible tells us there was a woman called Dorcas notable hallelujah to the point that when Dorcas died all the women were making reference they said no she had done see it wasn't just ordinary the way other people were doing she was a giver notable until we begin to move in notable realms of manifestations the world will find intelligent human ways the bible makes us understand that when jesus died they put certain people the military people to protect him hallelujah and if they suddenly came and saw the grave empty they would argue it and so god needed to do something no table the bible says on that resurrection morning i mean jesus had the ability to walk through and they would not see him at least peter did it peter walked out of the prison jesus would have kindly gone out of the grave but if he, if jesus just went out of the grave people will still argue it are you listening to me it had to be notable the moment a thing is notable it cannot be denied no table hallelujah notable i cannot look at this guy and say he's a lady no matter what scientific evidences i bring this guy is a man because it is what notable there are notable features that attest to the fact that this is a man i cannot see this and call it assuming this is not a bible and call it a living thing this is a book hallelujah this cannot be a human being no matter what biological experiment i do i cannot prove that this is a human being now listen we live in a world where almost everything can be proven with science hallelujah people are trying to prove whether walking on the red sea was genuine and their scientists and physicists are trying to conjure certain things the world is 
trying to disprove the fact that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And right now, there's the argument over transformation in lives and whether or not people are really healed. When someone says he's healed, they say, just forget, don't tell us that lie. The end of all argument is a notable manifestation. A notable manifestation. Hallelujah. If the people had never seen the man at the gate beautiful, they would conjure theories. Hallelujah. And said the apostles went and cooked this up. But everyone saw him. They knew him. They knew his parents. Are you following me? His parents were known. And then when this man got up, it was a notable manifestation. Although they tried to argue, they couldn't do much. Why? Because it was undeniable. When you move in the realm of notable manifestations, even Satan will stop arguing about the fact that Jesus is Lord over your life. Satan gave a testimony about Job. Hallelujah. One of the few, if not the only places in scripture where Satan gave a testimony about a man. Satan gave a testimony that he could not break through the hedge of protection that was around Job. Notable testimony. Then the Bible says, you are a city. Said you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be what? A notable city. You cannot be hidden. He said, let your light so shine. I want it to be noticed. I want it to be notable. Because when men see it and you let them know that I'm the author, then I will be glorified. That's why there are few cases in the Bible where Jesus healed the sick and did supernatural things in the hidden. There are few times, did you know, ironically, right now we have more miracles in the church than outside the church. But do you know when you study scripture, there were more miracles outside than in the church. Hallelujah. Notable manifestations of songs. The Bible makes us to understand that creation is waiting for the sons to begin to do undeniable things. There are certain people that when you talk about them in the world system, people can argue and say, forget, is this guy a real man of God? Just forget what they are doing. However, there are certain people that have stepped into a realm called notable manifestations that unbelievers, believers alike, no one understand that there is the hand of God upon their lives. We celebrate many evangelists in the world. However, there is a man called Evangelist Billy Biligraham. Notable Kabo Satabaya. There was something about his life. Hallelujah. And as a result, whether the president of America is a Freemason or not, he would come to pay homage to this man called Billy Graham there are many evangelists that have blessed the nations and especially Nigeria but we have one called evangelist Reinhard Bonke his name is almost like Coca-Cola when you call the name people say ah, I know Reinhard Bonke no table manifestations there's no denomination it doesn't matter what they believe or what they don't believe that will resist the presence of Reinhard Bonke. Notable manifestations. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? It's not enough to begin to manifest the life, the kingdom, the power. But we must step into a realm of undeniable manifestations. That when you are exhibiting the character of the spirit, it must be notable notable if you are a giver that you step into the realm of notable giving notable giving that your name will be synonymous every time I call your name what is notable about your life hallelujah B 
Bin Laden did a notable manifestation. Although he was evil, but it was a notable manifestation. You will never read the history of terrorism without mentioning his name. He earned himself that title. Notable manifestation. Hallelujah. A woman in church history called Mother Teresa. How many of you have read about her? Was she the only woman who loved people? Don't you love people? But there was something notable. Are you listening to me? Notable. Notable about her life. There were many apostles. Isn't it interesting how the Bible did not give detailed account of all of them? I wonder why. Because on the day of Pentecost, the Bible never said Peter received the Holy Ghost two days before the rest. How come some people did not make it the archives of their lives? I mean, the Bible dedicated two-thirds of his writing in the New Testament to just one man. I think that's not fair enough. Room would have been given one one chapter for everybody to encourage diversity. How be it there was a notable manifestation of an apostle. Hallelujah. And tonight I've come to tell us that the world will stop denying the hand of God upon our lives when we step into no 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 when we before you say amen let me finish it when this is the condition when we step into that dimension of the notable manifestation of souls hallelujah there is no man by the grace of God almighty who will pass around here and deny the fact that kings and priests there is a gathering of eagles to the glory of God there's no man who will deny that Jesus is Lord in this place it's to the glory of God I say it with all humility that every time you step there is something notable we must get to that dimension where there is something notable in our lives are you listening to me notable that your love life will become notable that every time they want to give an example of one who passionately loves the kingdom hallelujah they will say Aaron do you know Aaron is an example notable if it is not notable then you will never be able to make impact and bring glory to the father hear me herein is our father glorified when we bear much fruit hallelujah herein is our father glorified that when you become a notable mother such that it's not just your children who will attest to the fact that there's something about your life did you know that there are some families that the children prefer their neighbor's mother to be their mother or their neighbor's father because there's something notable there are some families that whenever you are free you want to go and relax there notable the life and the hand of God is notable there are certain people you want to be with the moment you have any spare time no matter how it inconveniences you you want to be around them there is something notable about their lives the question the Lord is asking tonight is what is notable about your life? What is notable for the kingdom? Many of us have a little of power here, a little of passion for God here, a little of zeal, a little of grace, a little of um, the giving life, a little, a little. But this Bible, I need you to know that there were many people who were featured in this Bible. But some were featured once and for all. Others were featured repeatedly 
in the Old Testament and they were featured in the part 2 of the Bible they couldn't be denied Abraham Elijah sorry and Enoch Elijah and who? Moses I'm sorry they had finished their course in the Old Testament what brought them to the transfiguration again? notable manifestations such that God used Moses to typify the law and he used Elijah to typify the prophets when God was showing me dimensions of his call upon my life one time I had a vision and God used two notable men of God to reveal to me the patterns that I would walk in and for years it bothered me I said Lord why did you use these people how many of you have had dreams where God used someone's face to teach you something when God is talking about love then you see why was it not your face hallelujah no table manifestations of songs the Lord wants us to step into that dimension where we begin to move in notable dimensions of the miraculous notable dimensions i cried and i prayed i told god yesterday you know while i was just praying in the night expressing my heart to the lord and i told him i said lord take me to that dimension of notable a notable life where everything about my life becomes an object of conversation to the glory of the lord hallelujah that people look and say why why does he talk this way why is it that um every time he speaks there seems to be something notable there are many people that sing on stage i, I always say it can sing on stage and raise a song and as you are going back your song dies with you there the people who are clapping cannot even remember what you sang hallelujah and then someone else will come on stage and sing the exact same song and that song will linger in your spirit for days and weeks every time the holy spirit wants you to worship that's the song even if you don't know everything about the song it could be a phrase it will remain in your spirit and every time you sing you see the face of the one who sang notable there are certain meetings that when you enter you get blessed and you go out but there are certain meetings when you enter you see that the presence of God in that atmosphere is notable notable hallelujah that when you sit there is the consciousness that the glory of God is in this place there is a consciousness that God in the midst of his people is mighty how many of you have taken an unbeliever for a program and this is someone that is a noise maker and will not be patient and say I'll sit down for five minutes and he sits down and after ten minutes you see a sense of reverence and a contemplation within his an intrapersonal contemplation something notable is happening to him hallelujah the bible makes us to understand that on the day of pentecost something notable happened that was not the first time they were celebrating pentecost are you following me now 50 days after the ascension of jesus something notable happened and it attracted everyone to come and the bible says that they saw men filled with the holy ghost and were speaking and when peter spoke there was something notable about his speech and as a result three thousand people three thousand people came to the lord hear me it's time for everything about our lives to become notable are you listening to me it's time for what everything about our lives to become notable that every time you stand and you minister the word there is something notable an identity that validates that christ 
is at work in your life. Come, Steve, please play this guitar. Notable. There are many people that play the guitar. There are many people that play all of these instruments. What is it about the man we call Steve Strings? It's not because he sings unusual songs necessarily. Go ahead and play Steve. No table. There is something. I know a lot of people, professional people that play guitar. But there is something notable. Hallelujah. And every time you hear him, whether you like what he's playing or not, you cannot deny that this comes from a realm that is not of the earth. There are certain people that when they speak, their wisdom is notable. The Bible calls certain people wise men from the east. There were many men from the east, but their wisdom was notable. Hallelujah. There's got to be something notable about your life for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Tonight we are going to rise above that average and that ordinary life. We are going to rise above that limitation of nominal Christianity. It's time for your Christianity to be notable. Not just notable in church. It's time for people to begin to argue and discuss about your passion for God. It's time for people to begin to discuss the grace of God upon your life. The workings of the Spirit. That every time they are talking about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. They tell them, can you see how I covet Shei's dimension of intimacy. There's something notable about her intimacy. I've had the opportunity of counseling and talking with a number of people about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And there are about three or four of them that have attained a realm I call notable intimacy. Hallelujah. That at the end of speaking with them, I had to go back to God and cry and say, God, what, what, what did these people do that brought you into that depth of intimacy? Hallelujah. A notable life. That every time people see you, your life becomes a motivation because there is something notable. Every time they are talking about an example of a true servant of God, can your name be called for notable kingdom stewardship? Every time they are talking about men and women who demonstrate um, what it means to be prosperous and yet godly can your name come in the midst of that notable discussion Acts chapter 4 verse 16 it says a notable miracle has been performed and we cannot deny it I look forward to the time when in and through my life we will keep our generation stand still and say, do you have any other argument as to why you think Jesus will not be Lord on this earth? Where we will dismiss all the facts and figures and all the things that people use to deny the fact that Jesus is Lord. I look forward to a time when a sorcerer and a diviner is doing whatever he has to do and then you step into that place unknowingly and the jazz stops working notable carbo satire without speaking in tongues and making noise let me tell you the world is tired of our noise what they need is the notable manifestation of sons 
and so we can preach and sweat on stage and they cross their legs but the moment they see something notable they will arise and say what is this notable for as long as you love like unbelievers love Christ cannot be glorified because it doesn't make any difference when your love becomes notable then it will compel men to know that there is an ability at work in you that is not human for as long as your wisdom is regular and natural I look forward to a time when the government will run to the church and say we we are confused we don't know where to go politically economically and the church will say oh yes we know let it be as it were in the days of Daniel that when there was confusion and chaos in Babylon because the king forgot his dream and the king forgot he didn't even know the interpretation all the sorcerers and diviners failed and the Bible says that there was need for a man who had the spirit of God in a notable fashion and Daniel stepped out the king said I will kill all of you and Daniel said there's, there's no cause for alarm just give me one night I will bring a notable result and he got up in the morning and says oh king let me tell you your dream and he began to astonish him and he said I testify that the spirit of the gods I testify the spirit of the gods is upon him the Bible says when they were tested he was found ten times better ten times better was a testimony that the hand of God was upon his life the Bible talks about a man called Job he said Job was the greatest man in the east they were prosperous people the east was known for prosperity and wisdom how be it it was notable we must begin to make notable impact notable impact in our community when the church builds a borehole in a community and builds a school let me tell you something the government will have no option but to involve the church in the decision making of that environment the reason why we pray in tongues and shout and the world is not moved by our tongues and our revelation is because it is not yet notable hallelujah that every time you go to greet your auntie or your uncle they receive you with such warm reception because they have marked it that every time you greet them a door is open so there's something notable about your life the moment you say i am coming they get very excited do you know that there are some people you long for them to visit you there are some people you long for them to come and say hello because there is something notable about their lives we are going to be raising a cry I cried out my life yesterday I said Lord a notable life my generation must know that a son an ambassador of the kingdom has stepped his feet upon this environment for the glory of the king for the glory of the king notable that your excellence becomes notable that your wisdom becomes notable that your life becomes notable that the grace of God upon your life becomes undeniable such that although you are not the firstborn in the family they will never make a decision without inquiring of you somehow they know that your impute is relevant not just because you are prosperous but because the hand the spirit of the Lord is upon you hallelujah that in your department and in your faculty they will note you for certain things 
when it comes to the affairs of wisdom they know that the wisdom of God resides upon a citizen when the king of Syria sent Naaman with a letter and the king of Israel was was disturbed Elisha now Elisha said oh king why are you worried he said send the man to me and let him know that there is a prophet in Israel send him let him know that God has ambassadors who are still alive and are still doing well I look forward to the time when things are not going on in your room and your house and you step in and say Lord prove that an ambassador lives in this room prove that an ambassador lives in this place where your life and every activity around your life becomes notable when they make you a faculty president or a departmental president or a pastor or a minister that there will be something about your dispensation that will enter the archives of history that when so 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 and so 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 person was here there was something notable how many of us desire that kind of life if you truly want to bring glory to the king then you must desire the notable manifestations of sons notable let me give you a testimony to the glory of god some years ago they brought a lady from congo who had some demonic things around her life very very terrible hallelujah and when that lady came she was supposed to come and see me i used to sit down near the sunday school building and i just sat there i was just meditating and as soon as this lady stepped close she wouldn't move further again and the people said let's go they said i'm not going and then at a point they forced her and the moment she stepped in just where i was seated she just started shouting she said god is in this place god is in this place god is in this place and that's how she fell under the power of god and i tell you the truth instantly i sat down i was sitting there and i said satan go notable manifestation of sons there are many of us that need to look at our parents and say i speak to you enough is enough notable and suddenly things begin to change around their lives and they look at you and say what is it about your life and then you let them know that he is lord and i live to bring him glory until your life is notable the king cannot be glorified through your life are you listening to me there's got to be something notable whenever people are in trouble that they can run to you because you have been noted for certain things whenever people need solutions they can run to you because you have been notable and the bible says it shall come to pass that the mountain of the lord will be exalted to a notable point and he said all nations shall flow to it because it will become a house of prayer it will become a house of solutions it will become a house of breakthrough a house of increase and that's what god is doing by his spirit in koinonia making this house a notable place notable for signs and wonders notable for impact and transformation notable for the manifestation of the law of the character of the spirit notable for the grace and the hand of god notable for raising giants and champions and great men notable for communicating the mind and the counsel of the spirit for every season and i call you tonight to join in this quest of having a notable life enough of the ordinary life enough of the life that people can argue and argue about and say we are not even sure whether he loves God or not let me tell you when people are arguing whether or not you are a Christian your life is not yet notable 
Hallelujah. When people look and say, Femi, sorry, you are arguing. Are you really filled with the Holy Ghost? Just settle this for us. Don't answer that question. Go back and lock yourself and say, Lord, my life must be notable. There are many people who try to replace this notable grace by wearing suits and speaking good English. None of this will cover for the notable hand of God for your life. I mustn't wear nice suit and speak with color and say, okay, I'm here, bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, I can bless your life. Invite me to preach well in your church. The hand of God upon your life ought to be undeniable. Are you listening to me? The Bible says when Jesus was born, there was a notable star. There were many stars, but there was one notable star. And the Bible says on account of that star, people began to flood into that place because a star was lifted and it was directly above that house. That the Lord will make your life like a star that people will flood and come and say what is it about the grace of God upon your life what is it about the hand of God what wisdom is this what knowledge is this hear me if you don't convert this thing that I'm preaching you will live an ordinary life and you will end up being frustrated the secret of impact that will bring glory to God especially in this generation of westernization and controversy there are so many options we need a notable manifestation of sons a notable manifestation of sons that when we are talking about givers the world will not dare say that they are on the top of the list in showing welfare and hospitality that the church will arise whenever there is disaster before the government finish their meeting who have sons of the kingdom who are empowered to step in and help the nations the notable hand of God upon our lives we look forward to times when when doctors conclude about people the church is already working in that dimension right now there are several sicknesses that even the hospital cannot diagnose and they tell them look I don't know what to tell you try God that's the only thing I know just try it's my desire that every one of us step into this notable lifestyle a notable lifestyle noted by believers and by unbelievers that the community in Zaria the community in Abu the community in Kaduna State, the community in Nigeria, will know that he reigns through your life. You know, every time we sing that song, Lord, you reign forever. When we get to the place that says, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. One night I was singing that song. And when I finished singing, suddenly my spirit I had a voice saying you reign so I twisted the song a little then when I sing you reign after a while I switch it I say I reign I reign I reign cause you reign I reign I reign I reign because you reign the scripture that John Fah shared he said the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty and begins they are not the congregation of the small God calls you mighty it's a meeting of mighty men and God is saying mighty men how come you have not delivered the poor and oppressed why are things going on as though you are not alive Archbishop Benson Idahosa, a man who lived a notable lifestyle during the popular Benin Witch Festival. 
you will never talk about the history of revival in Nigeria without talking about the Benin Witch Festival and the impact of Archbishop Benson Idahosa. All the witches were going to come from the world and gather in Benin for a conference. And Idahosa said, not when I'm alive, not when I'm in Benin, it will not hold. Notable audacity. And the media challenged him. He said it will not hold. And a few days or about a day to the meeting, they had to call a press conference of the chief of the witches. This is recorded on video. The chief of the witches and Archbishop Benson Idahosa. And they sat down. And the media people interviewed them. They said all kinds of things. And when the presenter was about rounding up, Idahosa said, wait, don't round up. I have something to say. And he turned and looked at the man and said, before the whole country, answer now. Are you a witch? Be careful as you give this answer because you may fall down and die now. Are you a witch? Answer the country. And the man kept quiet for a while. This was a king of the witches here in Nigeria from India, Asia, all over. And Idahosa said, I'm listening. Guess what the man said? No. Idahosa said, you can close the program. An ambassador. Alive and active. What a notable life. He was told that at a point he was traveling and armed, rob armed robbers blocked them. Hey, 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 come out, lie down. And he told, he was surprised. The driver was afraid. He, told, he, he said, park. He told the driver, park. And he came out and dressed his clothes. And the armed robbers said, lie down, lie down. And he looked at them. He said, three things must happen to you now. You are going to choose either to be paralyzed, to die, or to be blind. But what must happen to you right now? Now listen, I'm not just saying this. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. What kind of life is that? Hallelujah. It was said of Bishop Oedeko that armed robbers came and kidnapped his daughter. And they were running out. And he said, if I am a servant of God, they will not cross my gate. As soon as they got to the gate, something happened. They started arguing with one another. And they brought back the child. Do you believe this let me share with you a testimony to the glory of god i've shared the testimony we're lying down peacefully in our house when a thief came and entered and when he entered he went to uh, the table where we keep our laptops and he carried my laptop and when he carried it before you know my brothers got up you know tried to pursue the guy the guy ran opened the door and ran away and it was in the middle of that chaos i woke up and i said what's happening and he said the thief had gone away with my laptop and i looked and there was no laptop and i got up i said well lord two things will happen the laptop will come back or you give me money to buy a new one in any case you are lord hallelujah and then suddenly I saw a vision of an angel and he just did this with his hands and I didn't say anything hear me friends God is my witness they are here to testify seven hours later that laptop was back on the table we didn't raise any alarm the people in this in the in our neighborhood took it upon themselves and they pursued that armed robber and went to his house he hid it under the carpet in their house they brought it out this was the case i was counseling people in school when they called me and said please come they had to go and bring his brother in um when um, the military cantonment what do we call it basawa and he came wanting to come and just plead with me and the guy packed his things and ran out of zaria a time will come when somebody wants to harm you he will reconsider and say is he worth it is the is he worth it the word of god says touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm 
when you begin to say ah witches are disturbing me devils are this and that will you press into god to a notable dimension where the demons and devils will reconsider and say is he worth it or are we trying to frustrate ourselves for nothing that you become so excellent and blameless that your that your lecturer will have no basis of implicating you the bible says they look for an occasion to implicate daniel and they didn't find anyone rise up on your feet it's a communion service so we we'll have to pray so that we'll quickly take the communion go ahead and bless the lord notable manifestations of sons go ahead and begin to bless the name of the lord go ahead and bless his name and say lord notable manifestations notable from today by the hand of god the grace of god upon my life is notable 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 the wisdom of god upon my life is becoming notable go ahead and pray my world life is notable my understanding my insight to the world is notable your prosperity upon my life is notable the goodness of god upon my life becoming notable over the works of my hands notable go ahead and pray pray for your ministry pray for your life pray for your fellowship pray for your business for your group notable When our lives become notable, then the world will reckon. 
with the fact that God is at work in our lives when our lives when our passion for God when our zeal for his house when our giving when our the manifestations of his grace his power his wisdom when it becomes obvious undeniable then there will be no argument again it's foolish to argue with notable results hallelujah 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 praise God now tonight is a communion service and we're going to be taking the communion now I want you to take the communion with understanding and revelation and I'll be reading two scriptures very quickly John John chapter 6 brothers and sisters I like you to cherish what God is doing in our midst he's truly making us kings and priests unto our God hallelujah verse 35 John 6 35 and Jesus said unto them I am the bread of life and he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never thirst hallelujah verse 53 just jump quickly to verse 53 and Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have what no life in you it's not talking about the biological life the manifestation of the divine life that will make you notable notable he who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed 56 he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth with me and I in him. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying for every time you partake of the communion, you reenact you re the revelation of your oneness. Are you listening to me? Every time you take the communion, you realize that you is in the realm of the spirit. There is a renewal. Of the fact that you are one with Christ and that you are a possessor of the God life a life that is beyond sickness a life that is beyond failure a life that is beyond weakness are you listening to me the divine life above and beyond the limitations of the flesh very quickly let me show you something in 2nd Corinthians I understand for many of you who have observed you will notice that there has been an escalation of the death of fathers how many of you have taken note of that people's fathers just dying and the rate at which people are falling ill and falling sick but the Bible says there is a bomb in Gilead I want to show you a spiritual mystery tonight turn with me Sorry, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11. How that the communion is a spiritual principle that is an antidote to sickness, an antidote to weakness, and an antidote to the plague of death. Hallelujah. Verse 23. For I have received the, of the Lord that which I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is, did he say this is bread? He said, This is my body, which is broken for you, broken for your sickness, broken for your weakness, broken for your limitation. Are you following me now? He said do this in remembrance of me after the same manner also the cup 
and when he had supped saying this is the cup of the new testament in my blood these two as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me hallelujah follow me to verse 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body verse 30 for this cause stop for not taking the communion with the understanding and the revelation of what it is empowered to do there are three things that happen for this cause many are number one weak many are number two sick and many sleep so when the communion is taken with understanding and revelation it gives you supernatural strength as ordinary as this looks humanly this is just bread and cake or, or drink or whatever but that there is a revelation in the spirit that this is what the bible calls the balm in gilead that when there is a plague of, a plague of weakness a plague of sickness the midst of the lord's body that his body was broken in exchange for your strength in exchange for your weakness in exchange so taking that reenacts in the realm of the spirit the blessing of strength the blessing of health the blessing of longevity are you following me now and so we are taking this communion tonight with the understanding that there will be a supernatural impartation of strength spiritual strength mental strength and physical strength and we are taking this that by the revelation of Jesus Christ his body broken for us that no sickness listen to me no devil no demon will survive your body as you take off this communion and lastly that with this communion we end the plague of death over our lives and our families listen you need to believe this there is many people suffer because we do not understand the principles that God has put to address certain issues there's no point arguing over what God has said the mystery of the communion hallelujah the worshipers will lead us will quickly do this as we share please if you don't get just be patient I hope the cups go round I invite the ministers please as many just come we have one two three four five six seven eight nine seven twelve need at least twelve people please hallelujah at least twelve people praise God father in the name of Jesus I pray over this communion this is ordinary drink and bread but we declare that the impartation of the Holy Ghost comes upon it in the name of Jesus that as we take this communion tonight it becomes a supernatural antidote against weakness we banish weakness even that by the mystery of the Holy Communion in the name of the Lord Jesus we banish sickness from our camp we banish sickness from the body in the name of the Lord Jesus and father every covenant of death upon everyone's life and over our families as we take the communion an end comes to it let the plague stop in the name of the Lord Jesus therefore we bless this communion and we call it anointed in the name of Jesus servants of God you can just pick it and walk around we may have some station some people should service those outside please do that quickly don't take it yet just take the cup and the bread hallelujah please let's have more people yeah pastor you can have this let's have some people go outside please do it make it snappy 
Just make sure you have the the bread and the cup and begin to pray prayerfully. Yes, Pastor Show. Believe in what is happening in this place. Please let's make it snappy. Make a baraka tabara rabosha. Man to soto kagada balara basha. Let's do it very quickly, very quickly. Let the ministers help out. Just ensure you have the bread and the cup inside, outside. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and express your heart. What you're trusting that the Lord caused this to do in your life. This is not just a religious ritual. In one minute, I'd like this communion to make sense to you. the welfare let's have more looks like there are still people more as many who have even if you don't have you can get the bread let's let's save time if you've not gotten the call please just leave hands all right, please locate them and let everyone have it. There's more of the cup here. We're taking the bread, just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us have not gotten the cup or the bread? Hallelujah. Please, can we make this snappy? Let's do it really fast. Just keep your hands lifted.
please locate them and, and the ministers turn so that you can the Bible says that Jesus said if you eat please um, Shade there are people here is it the cup or the, the bread okay please the bread just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly pass it around very quickly father we declare in the name of the lord jesus that this is a sacred spiritual exercise we are taking this to end the plague of death to end the plague of weakness to end the plague of sickness he said we should do this in remembrance of you hallelujah hallelujah now together we are going to take the bread and the cup even even if we've taken it and you've not gotten it um, you can take that later on who has the bread i see that they are not okay please get another one Ejimi has one there please I need everybody to have it let's do it quickly tumors will die growth will go demonic oppressions will leave plague of death will end who has the bread I'm not sure the ministers have the bread please are you done okay do so quickly please do we all have this? Do we all have this? Please let me have the remaining. So you can pick one for yourselves. That's all right. Just okay, here's the bread. Do we have any? Who doesn't have? Okay. Everybody. You've taken your own. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now look up please. This is ordinary bread. Hallelujah. And this is ordinary wine or juice or zobo or whatever it is. How be it? I need you in one moment to cease looking at this as just bread and a cup. There is a spiritual mystery. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, if you eat this, it's my flesh. And if you take this, it's my blood. That for every time you do this, you enact a mystery. An inexplainable mystery in the realm of the spirit. That dispels weakness, dispels sickness, and dispels death. And after tonight's communion, we will say, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your strength? Enough of dying around. It's happening all over the country. Enough of sickness and weakness. Lord, we believe. And Father, anoint this even as we take it. We bless it in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit together now let's take it go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit please pass the cups round go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit say the mystery of the body and the cup go ahead and challenge weakness Challenge sickness, challenge death 
in the name of Jesus, we are obedient to the ordinances of God. Challenge every unfaithfulness over your life, over your family members. No more death, no more loss, no more weakness. Every pain, challenge it in the name of Jesus. For when our obedience is complete, God is committed to perform. Make it a yes, Run to When your obedience is complete, cancers die in the name of Jesus. Tumors die in the name of Jesus. Fibroids be gone. Demonic oppression be gone. Every mental problem by the power of the communion. Oh, then, where is thy sting? We banish the hand of death. We banish the plague of death. We receive strength, strength, energy, vitality, longevity. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff. Thou preparest a table for us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oil and our cup of us hope. Surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Help. Longevity, longevity. Hallelujah. Declare, I shall not die, but leave to declare. Go ahead and declare. I refuse it. So kataba. Don't take it for granted. Don't take what you are doing for granted. We are operating under instruction. Don't take it for granted. We refuse to mourn any death. Let the plague of death be taken far from the camp. For there are ambassadors. The plague of death. The plague of accidents. The plague of unrobbery. The plague of war. We decree it. We are preserved. According to John 5. In summary, we are preserved. Preserved from the spotted tongues of men. We come from above. We understand the principles by which our kingdom operates. And we enact that principle. Let it be registered in the realm of the spirit. More than conquerors. We live long. We live strong. We live happy. We live healthy. Graceful. Favor. Peaceful. Make it impact. We fear no evil. We are immune against robbers, immune against wicked men, immune against sickness, immune against demonic oppression. There's freedom by the power and the revelation. For when our obedience is complete, then God watches over his work to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a practice that you can go on with. Don't idolize it. That's the trouble with people. When we begin to do things like this, we idolize it. It must be administered within the context of the world. 
Lord, we thank you for tonight's meeting. We'll be noted the goodness of God upon our lives will be notable. The hand of God upon our lives will be notable. The favor of God upon our lives will be notable. The character of the Spirit upon our lives will be notable. Our impact and increase their undeniable results will be notable Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time worshiping with us very quickly. We are out of time. I'd like you to leave your seat and walk up quickly inside, in the overflow, outside. Appreciate them. If this is your first time, please, I'd like you to come out. Just walk up. We love you. We respect you. Please appreciate them. Do it very, very quickly. We're out of time. Hallelujah. I'd like you to jump up like a general and come very quickly. We got the light of the world. A city. Wow. Appreciate them. Come on. Give them a big, big koinonia welcome. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to have every one of you. Can we appreciate them? Give them a big, big koinonia. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's our joy and pleasure to have you worship with us. This is koinonia. God is doing great things. Hallelujah. Bringing us into points of intimacy with his spirit and equipping us to make great impact for the kingdom. Hallelujah. So I welcome every one of you. Thank you so much for making our time. We love you. We respect you. Very quickly, we want to pray and prophesy. I need you to understand that every one of us here is anointed, full of God's spirit. And when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. So we want to stretch our hands and pray for you. And all I'd like you to do is just receive it into your spirit and believe. Saints of God, let's stretch our hands from all over the building and just pray, prophesy. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. The Bible says he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of salvation. And he said, this is the generation of them. And seek thy face, O Jacob. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Come on, Professor. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Above every challenge. Thank you for lifting. Above every failure. He's lifting you tonight. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. I like you to see yourself rising. Thank you for lifting. Above every challenge. Above every situation. I don't care what problem you that you came here with. See you tonight. Lift it your body. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting above every failure, thank you for lifting above every sickness, above every limitation. You are in the presence of Yeshua Hamashiach. Thank you, thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My For thou, O Lord. Had a shield for me, my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. 
Come on, celebrate him. Come on, celebrate him with a clap and a shout of victory. The Bible says a shout of joy and victory. Come on, shout. Come on, shout. It's a shout of victory. It's a clap of victory. The shout of joy and victory will not be part from the tents of the righteous. Father, tonight we declare that you alone are Lord in this place. You are the only one who deserves to be exalted. No flesh takes your glory tonight. We are totally helpless without you. Except by your spirit we can do nothing. We are not ashamed to declare that we are helpless without you. And except you strengthen us tonight, we are unable to help ourselves. Lord, let the communication of your spirit be effectual in us tonight. Let your word come like fire in our spirits. And Lord, with your word, let there be grace to walk in obedience. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Friends, there's something about the presence of God. Every time you come into an atmosphere of God's presence, I'd like you to know that when the portals of heaven are opened, there are several things that happen the impartations of the spirit the communication of the wisdom of the spirit now a lot of the things that happen to believers in the presence of God are so supernatural that it takes for you to be spiritual to be able to acclimatize yourself to the atmosphere of the glory because the Bible says the natural man of this people is mighty there are three dimensions of God's presence taught in scripture the first dimension of his presence is what the bible calls his omnipresence his ability to be everywhere at the same time the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence where can i hide from your presence he is suffering he began the beginning the bible says his eyes runs through and fro searching the entire earth and so when you talk of the omnipresence of God is his ability to be everywhere at the same time when Adam sinned in the garden the Bible says they went and they hid and in Genesis chapter 3 the Bible says and they had the voice of God the Hebrew word says they had the talking spirit walking in the cool of the day and he said Adam where art thou and Adam said I heard thy voice and I hid because I was naked where can I hide from your presence that's the reason why the Bible says how that he has the ability not only to scan his eyes around the world but to scan the hearts of men and judge the intents of the hearts of men he is omnipresent it's an ability that is exclusively for the god class his ability to be everywhere that's the reason why all believers all over the world can lift up their voice to god for help and at the very same time he's able to respond to their needs He's able to relate with you. While he's there with you in the room, he's there on a crusade ground. He's there helping a woman to deliver safely. He's there helping somebody out of accident. He's omnipresent. Listen, sometimes we need to know the qualities of God to help us worship him. 
because a lot of times we think he's like one of us but when we understand that although we are part takers of his divine nature we didn't give him the nature he's he brought us into a participation of his nature but then there are certain dimensions of his nature that has not been given to us to participate that's the dimension that makes him god one of it is his omnipresence no man has in himself the ability to be everywhere at the same time even satan does not have that ability in the book of job chapter one the bible says the sons of god gathered and satan was in their midst and god asked him from whence and he said from running to and fro he was at a specific location but god is in this place and all over the world where true believers are gathered in the name of jesus christ he's there in their midst his omnipresence the second dimension of him is what i call his emmanuel dimension the bible says where two or three are gathered in his name he says he's there emmanuel means god in the midst of his people god with us his ability that every time we gather in the name of Jesus, we are confident that he's there in our midst. That's the dimension of him that gives us confidence to agree with one another and pray and say, Lord, we commit this issue and that issue and we are sure that he's in our midst. Listen, you need to learn to look at God not just as a king seated far in some galaxies you need to realize that you are before the throne I like that beautiful song so we bow as we enter the throne room and we do what You are worthy, thou art holy, there is none like you in your presence, that is where I must be. Very powerful song. The Bible says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. If you couldn't come, the Bible will not ask you to come. So we have the ability to be in the throne room. We have the ability to be with him where he is. Otherwise, there's no point talking about koinonia. Many of us see God high up there. And sometimes we come out of our rooms and say, God, I hope you can hear me. But you need to realize that he's, how did Darling Jack put it? So close, I believe you're holding me now in your hands. You, you never let me go he's so close he's not just far up there so his Emmanuel dimension begins to give you the consciousness that he's not only alive and around but he's with you the Bible calls him our ever present help in time of need the one who sticks closer than even a brother the third dimension of his presence is called his Shekinah his manifested presence where not only is he in the midst of his people but there is an awareness of your spirit your soul and your body the environment animate and inanimate things realize that their maker is in their midst and you are engulfed in the glory and in his presence and that's what causes the shaking the falling down and all of the supernatural manifestations the bible says when that dimension happens it says the mountains keep like lambs the awe and the majesty of his presence when israel complained and said is it only moses that god will speak to he said all right sanctify yourselves i want to show you a sample of what my shekinah looks like the bible says when he showed up and they heard his voice together they said no just speak to Moses anything you tell him we will do the presence of God is not only majestic it's fearful fearful 
and that's the dimension from where miracles are released that's the dimension from where healings are released that's the dimension from where impartations are released so you sit under that atmosphere of Shekinah and you step out in the realm of glory suddenly you begin to see that there is an overflow of his life and glory in your life there is beauty that emanates from your life that's why we spend time in worship because we want to allow not only our spirits but our souls and our mortal bodies to interact with that atmosphere of his Shekinah and suddenly you find out that tumors disappear growths disappear because everything that symbolizes death is always swallowed up in victory hallelujah praise the lord and so i'd like you to always have that consciousness that every time we come before god's presence every time we come before god's presence our hearts must be open to just soak in that atmosphere of his glory realize that you're not just singing you're not just helping the worshipers but you are standing in the presence of god from where the life of that river the life of that glory rubs up upon your life and when you step out see let me tell you something you will not realize how changed you are in god's presence until you step back in the midst of the darkness and then you see how much illumination comes out from your spirit you find out that suddenly certain vocabularies just edit themselves out of your life you don't know when that transition happened it happened in the glory certain decisions certain decisions and resolutions are crystallized in your spirit you begin to make up your mind the grace to walk in certain realms is imparted in his presence that's why we gather here hallelujah so lord we thank you for the gift of your presence we really thank you for your presence and tonight as we behold you let us be changed into that which we are beholding the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty he says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of God. We are changed from one dimension of glory. And so let us be changed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans. I'll just talk very briefly. of Romans the Lord is seeking men and women who will carry the life the power the glory of the kingdom and permeates the systems of the world this has been his singular message and let me tell you something about God when God calls him and the Bible says that is Jesus Christ saw different kinds of people scattered around and he called them come follow me he called Nathaniel he called Peter he called the disciples when God calls a man he doesn't send the man immediately he calls you then the next thing is that he makes you he said come and I will make you and for three and a half years by the teaching of his word by the experience of the miraculous things he did he made them and then the Bible says he sent them at a certain time the 12 to go and test run the things that he was imparting in them the bible says they came back rejoicing then he sent them alongside 70 others and the bible says they came to him rejoicing they said even the devils were subject to us in thy name 
but even at that dimension they were still in the making process listen it pays to stay in the school of the spirit sometimes you see the caliber of people that God is raising here I, I have the privilege of knowing a lot of us here and I know the dimensions that we are functioning in the spirit terrible realms in the spirit yet the Lord is still subjecting us to the making process because when he's done with us and he sends us out we will be absolute wonders to our generation that's what he's doing he said he that bears fruit I will prune sharpen refire that he may bear much fruit that's what God is doing so when God calls a man he makes him some of you may be wondering Lord with this level of anointing you have still not sent me and God says sit down you need more than you have now to touch your generation this may be sufficient to touch Samaru but not the nations this may be sufficient to touch Zaria but not the nations this may be sufficient to touch Nigeria but not the nations Bible says who through faith subdued kingdoms every time God keeps reminding me that I'm still in the making process I tell people if you think you've seen anything about my life this is only the beginning because I'm still in the baking room of the spirit that's why you see when you are conscious of being made no level of glory will carry your it will, will enter your head such that you lose out on the remaining training after doing terrible things in righteousness you go back to the secret place but a day will come when the master will tap you and say this is my beloved son and he will command the world to hear you when he makes that decree the doors of nations become open out of their own volition no you become an infant of fire nobody will be able to stop you hallelujah romans chapter 8 verse 18 for I reckon oh by the way I I decided to suspend we are taking a series on the ancient parts how many of you were blessed last week hallelujah but I decided to just fold that series and keep it aside until we are in full strength because it's a very critical teaching that I want everybody to be part of hallelujah and so I just decided to wrap it and keep it ancient secrets we began by examining Jeremiah chapter 6 he said ask for the ancient parts and walk in it and we spoke last week about the anointing I wanted to complete the series is a long series it will take us at least four weeks to explore some of the things and so I just decided to keep it until we have all our other members around so that we can flow together hallelujah so tonight I'm going to be teaching very briefly on the pathway to sonship the pathway to sonship the pathway to sonship I trust that the Lord will grant us grace you would have noticed that here we don't just teach results we teach the process because when you understand the process and the principles then the results are inevitable hallelujah the pathway to sonship romans chapter 8 verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 for the earnest expectation of creation wasted for the manifestations of the sons of god for the creation was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god 22 for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now and not only they but ourselves also who have the first fruits of the spirit 
even ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption that is the redemption of our body look up I want to share with us very briefly on the process the making of a son now there are many Greek words that were used in scripture to connote uh, sons many of them but there are two interesting ones I want to teach on the first is called technon and the second is called wheels technon and wheels two powerful words hallelujah now I like you to understand that when you give birth to a child please watch this when you give birth to a child that child comes with um, a thinking process and a mindset that does not permit him to do a lot of things in that environment hallelujah and over time as the child begins to watch other people elderly people and as he begins to interact with his environment certain things begin to become evident in the child's life when he's always lying down and he watches people walking one day he will attempt to begin to do what they are doing are you following me now and then he begins to try to talk then he begins to try to reason and over time there is a metamorphosis in that child from complete childhood he becomes a teenager and then uh, an adolescent and then an adult and so on and so forth that's the way it is in the spirit and we are in their need of sons we have a lot of children in the body and there is need for men the bible says that god desires to bring many into sonship now sonship is not just the issue of confessing and saying i'm a son i receive it you don't receive sonship by impartation it's a door it's a process it's a making just like how many of you have seen little children who try to behave like adults you just see a little child and then he he takes with one and tries to gum it around his face in an attempt to look like an adult does that make him an adult that very act proves that he's still a child hallelujah and so we have a lot of believers who camouflage as sons i need you to know tonight that sonship is not just about confession you don't just receive sonship i know that many of you will say ah the bible says to them that believe in him he gave you the right to be called sons of god i'm going to explain something to you a lot of translations in especially in the old king james certain words were interchanged two of them was weos and technon technon talks of a child a baby one who is has inadequate knowledge and education and information one who is not able to do a lot of things and then we are stocks of one who by reason of knowledge has attained the same status with his father so there is an interplay of those words in scripture and many of them have been interpreted sons sons are you following me now when you get born again when you accept jesus christ into your life the first thing that happens is that there is a translation i've always used this let me use two people i like being very graphic please aaron come sir come just one here one here hallelujah now this is the world system this is the kingdom where satan is lord a system that was built by cain the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and he built a city and named it after his son Enoch. And the Bible says that all kinds of rebellious things happen in that city. A city that did not recognize and work with the government of God. Hallelujah. And so, we are born with this system. We live here. There is a law in this realm. It's called the law of sin and death. That's the law that is responsible for greed and wickedness. And oppression and selfishness. The spirit of the power of the air that walks in the sons of disobedience and so we are all born in this realm but every time we accept that Jesus is Lord of our lives there is a translation you need to understand this you know you may not feel anything happen to you how be it in the spirit there is a translation from this kingdom the kingdom of darkness 
into the kingdom of light the kingdom of God's dear son hallelujah but now what we do not realize is that when you are born again that initial experience affects only your spirit are you following me this is where a lot of people miss out let me give you a scriptural proof when Israel came out of Egypt that's a type of our coming out are you following me now when Israel came out of Egypt it was a type of our coming out but there needed to be a separation are you following me what the Red Sea did was it caused a permanent separation between Egypt and Israel and they sang they said I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his riders the systems have been thrown into the sea so many believers what they do is they just come out of Egypt and stop and then later on they find out that Pharaoh is still looking for them the first step to get to the promised land is to come out of Egypt but that's not the only step the second step is that there must be a passing through the sea the Bible says that we'll be washed by the the regenerating of the water there is an experience of passing through the water in the spirit and that's what causes the Bible says, except you be born of water and of the spirit he said you cannot enter the kingdom of God so it's one thing to see the kingdom he was speaking to Nicodemus you can see the kingdom when you step out of Egypt but it takes a washing of the water and of the spirit for you to experientially begin to enter the realities of the things of the spirit there are so many believers that see the kingdom they can describe what it looks like but it takes the interaction of the water so that we begin to step into the reality of it so there is a translation when you come into this realm the ministry of the holy spirit changes in your life because he that told his ministry would because as a non-believer his ministry is to convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment now when you become a believer and he comes to live inside you his ministry changes he begins to be unto you an advocate a teacher a strengthener a guide a standby an intercessor he begins to bring the reality of the revelation of the word into your spirit and he begins to teach you the principles of this kingdom as he teaches you the principles of the kingdom grace is imparted upon you to begin to walk experientially in that reality hallelujah and so I like you to know that it is true that in Christ we are all sons but it takes the revelation there is a making that brings you into an experiential position of sonship so there are many of us that look like sons but in reality we are not experiencing the benefits and the blessings that follow sons the Bible says an heir as long as he's a child Galatians 4 differ it not from a slave although that child is royalty but because he must be made there is a process that makes him in the process of the making of that child they teach him the attitude of royalty they teach him how to speak like royalty they teach him how to walk like royalty they teach him how to respond to situations like royalty and over time when he is, has been tried and proven then certain riches of that kingdom is now committed to him hear me friends there are certain realities in the spirit that only sons can touch no matter how you shout there will keep being a call upon your spirit man to step up into the reality of sonship hallelujah bringing many sons into glory and so the holy spirit begins to walk upon your mind the Holy Spirit begins to teach you the principles of the kingdom. Hear me. The major work of a believer, of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, is to change his mind. 
now don't take this for granted the major work of the holy ghost um some years ago when whenever i read this scripture is anything too hard for me to do how many of you have read that scripture the the thing that bothers me about that scripture is the word too why will god who is almighty say is there anything too hard why is it too hard and one day i asked the holy spirit i said what's the mystery behind this too hard that god is saying and god says the reason why it seems to be too hard is that i have to keep getting you until you come into alignment with me and that's the difficult part of the process because i am always able but sometimes it takes years for him to begin to touch you until you come to a point where you are in synchrony with heaven and then at that point the realities of the things of heaven can begin to flow into your life the primary challenge of believers is that we are yet to synchronize our minds there is there is need for a synchrony with the things of heaven such that it always will be done on earth as it is done in heaven our inability to synchronize our lives and our minds with the principles by which heaven is governed listen the same principle god is trying to give you here on earth many of them are the same principles that govern heaven love the fruit of the spirit that's the principle that governs heaven and because everyone in heaven there is perfect synchrony to those principles so heaven is the way it is so why is the earth this way because the sons who have been given the ability to rule the earth have not yet allowed themselves to come into synchrony and any life that will painstakingly push himself to that point suddenly begins to experience heaven within that environment that's the reason why you can see two people living in the same environment and one is walking in the reality of heaven's life and the other is walking in another reality because the other one has made himself synchronized your mind the bible says do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed be ye changed by the renewing of your mind every day of my life I keep seeing again and again that the singular secret for victory in this life is when a man can stand in synchrony with God you will become an awesome wonder any man you see today who has manifested certain levels of the anointing or certain levels of notable impact has brought himself by the activity of the spirit to that point where the laws of God becomes the laws that your life is governed by there is perfect synchrony at that point heaven finds expression in your life and in your atmosphere and so from being a child the Holy Ghost begins to walk on their minds the Holy Ghost begins to teach them the activities of the Spirit the Holy Ghost begins to teach them the mindset that the Word of God brings suddenly you begin to find out that over your finances there is a principle it's not magic it's not mistake it's not God liking some people or hating some people suddenly you begin to find out from the word that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth and there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty suddenly you realize that when you bring in all your tithes into the storehouse the heavens are open over you and the devourer is rebuked suddenly you understand that he that soweth sparingly will reap sparingly and he that soweth bountifully will reap bountifully as the holy ghost begins to bring you now it's not a it's not one day's job because when the holy spirit brings to your mind the principles of the kingdom the flesh in you will wrestle it because it knows that it will no longer hold the place of authority when the laws of god come into place and so it is a price 
because that will mean dropping greed for instance dropping selfishness helping men not being weary in well doing and it takes the grace of God but the beautiful thing is that as the Holy Ghost shows you the laws he stands by you to ensure that you enforce it then the Holy Ghost begins to teach you about your health he tells you that there is a system in the kingdom that can keep you free of sickness and it looks impossible until you painstakingly cooperate with him then you come to a point where you begin to understand the activity of the spirit in your body that if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in this mortal body, not just in your spirit, that there is a divine ability, there is an energizing that he causes. It's like a drug. He sends it all over your body and there is a quickening. Now it takes a while because even while you are reading that scripture, the devil will bring every kind of thing your body will refuse to cooperate and paul said i keep my body under subjection in other words you say body you are not above me this law must you must bend till you cooperate with this principle then jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 comes to play he watches over his word he's alert and active waiting for your obedience so that you'll be committed to a performance see a time will come in life when when certain realities of the kingdom have not entered you you will die for many of us who like running for ministry ministry a time will come you will minister like this and you know that if you do not understand the quickening ministry of the holy spirit you will drop dead one day on stage because a time can come you will have ministrations all through the week and there are several things you have to attend to but when you understand that there is the quickening of the spirit there is no there's nothing like breakdown no it's supernatural they see an ordinary man but there is another law walking in your members the pathway to sonship where the word of god begins to paint your new reality your reality begins to be framed by the word of god and then you understand that you have been raised up with Christ. That when he died, not only did he die for you, but you died in him. That when he was buried, you were buried in him. That when he defeated Satan, when these brothers were in him by covenant, this, this, uh, defeating Satan. And when he rose again, the Bible says he raised us up and made us to sit with him in heavenly places far above the witches in every village far above principalities and powers and every name that is named when that reality begins to enter your spirit it may take a while but when that happens there will be a signal in the realm of the spirit and every devil will know that this light has entered your spirit at that point there will be nothing of Satan in you and you can stand and then that scripture will now become a reality that in my name they shall cast out devils you enter an atmosphere that threatens hell jesus walked upon the earth and showed us an example of sonship when he stepped into an environment the demon suddenly began to operate we went for a crusade after um, last week week before last we went for a meeting somewhere in southern Kaduna and as they just checked on us into the hotel we just lay down and I decided to take some rest as soon as I just put my head suddenly I sensed a very evil presence and suddenly I just turned and there was a demon standing before me he said what have you come to do here I shared with them that's what he told me he said what have you come to do here listen when you become a son when your feet steps into a territory there is a ripple effect in that territory they know that something has happened that's why you see the devil tries to fight some meetings there are some meetings he doesn't bother he even helps to plan it for them because it makes no relevance whatsoever but then there are some meetings that shake hell to its foundation and if the devil begins to beat left right and center because it's the manifestation of sons 
men and women who understand the laws of the spirit men and women and, and women who have mastered the art of bringing their bodies and their minds in alignment to cooperate with the holy spirit so they can stand and make decrees and command nations to be open and the gates of nations will swing open so how are sons made simple very simple there's no complication about it the difference between a child and a son is knowledge understanding and obedience the difference between a child he says when i was a child first um, corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 when i was a child i thought like a child i understood like a child i acted like a child he said now that i'm a man i laid aside these childish things the difference between a child and a son technon and wheels is that transition in the spirit the lord begins to walk the first thing is knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the bible says my people are destroyed my people are destroyed my people are destroyed not because satan is powerful until you understand these realities in the spirit satan will keep looking like a mountain i refuse to see him as a mountain hallelujah it's the pathway to sonship you come to a point where there is sufficient knowledge the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 3 i believe it says according as his divine power have given us all things not some all things that pertain unto life and godliness how through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says wherefore has he given us this exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped this corruption through lust and so the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom is what we need first of all are you following me say after me knowledge knowledge say one more time knowledge that's what we need that's why you hear people like pastor chris say all you ever need is wrapped up in the word he says go for the word go for it is the truth go for the word we go for many things all kinds of things what we need is to stay with the word to stay with the word when the illumination of the word arises in your spirit it sets you above it brings you into sonship the activity of the word of God upon your spirit and upon your mind and upon your body is what brings you into sonship knowledge the second is understanding the Bible says with all you're getting get understanding I shared it um, in a, God bless you sir I shared it in a Sunday meeting but then I'll share it again I want to tell you the difference between knowledge and understanding and I want to use a very practical example it's believed that we guys don't know how to cook very well praise the Lord now it's not like we don't know how to cook we know we don't understand how to cook you, you get it now because the same ingredients the ladies are using that's what we are using why are the results different they know when to put what the, are you following me now the guys for instance jollof rice if i tell you give me a quick tip on making jollof rice that's very easy hot water rice comes in add oil add uh, uh, crayfish add whatever you have left close it trust god to do the rest now and it has produced some results in our lives because we have been able to eat the food are you following me now but when when a lady is cooking because by experience she has not only been taught what to do but how to do it she knows that okay after five minutes you add this you have finished adding your own since she has not added her own there are certain things that they add only five minutes when the food is about to be done and then the same ingredients two of you went to the market and then you leave your food and eat out that's the difference between knowledge and understanding 
are you following me now knowledge is just acquiring the information knowing that these are the things to be done but understanding gives you the steps it tells you that when you get to this point knowledge says tight and be blessed understanding says this is the attitude this is how you tight are you following me now knowledge says give understanding says this is how you give knowledge says the just shall live by faith understanding says this is the dynamics of faith you hear the word you believe you step out are you following me now so what we need is not just knowledge many believers have knowledge rema 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 that has not translated into anything we have a lot of rema but what we lack is understanding so in proverbs he said with all you're getting don't just know that this is what needs to be done you must understand how it should be done that's why some people walk through some situations as if satan does not exist and yet others are still in that situation are you getting blessed understanding the understanding of the word there are several people that have thought about faith there are several people that have taught so many things about faith but there are few people that understand how faith works and it's those who understand and apply it that get the results it's one thing to say i live by faith hallelujah in the name of jesus i live by faith that's just step one but because we do not understand the operation of faith what the bible calls the spirit of faith so the making of a son is that there is a translation the word of god begins to walk in you children begin to live and manifest the character of egypt although they are out of egypt you still begin to see bitterness envy and all of these things and the holy ghost begins to walk in you remember our prayer last week we prayed about the heart condition god begins to attack your heart thoroughly until he brings out everything that does not line up with his principles then you find out that your heart is pure towards god and then you begin to experience certain riches of the kingdom the making of sons so i like for you to know that you don't just receive sonship as an impartation if it were so nobody would still be pressing towards the deep things of the spirit again because as long as we give our lives to christ we become sons but hear me friends it takes a while and the pathway for sonship is that you realize that although you are a child of god you are technon the word of god the understanding of his principles the knowledge the understanding and then the obedience the bible says they had the word like we did but the word did not profit them not being mixed with faith obedience you must be diligent and obedient you must be diligent and obedient hear me friends your obedience until you have been hammering on this issue of obedience if your obedience is not complete you will never step into the reality of sonship sons are those who have learned how to obey jesus said my meat is to do and finish the will of him that has sent me even at gethsemane he said father if it be thy will take this cup of me but he said nevertheless not my will sons have come to a point where they are resolutely obedient even unto death even unto death an heir as long as he's a child friends koinonia is an avenue for us to step up into the reality of sonship enough of this oppression by demons we come shout in tongues sing and dance and then we go back and we are badly oppressed by satan oppressed by sickness oppressed by failure that's the reason why our light unbelievers cannot understand what we are shouting about because the same things that keep them down are the same things that keep us down the same limitation they have is the same limitations we have and so they truly cannot see any difference but when we step into sonship they begin to see something different about our lives that when they break down there is supernatural strength for you to move forward 
that when they are communicating with the wisdom of men you come with the wisdom of God there's something about your life that attracts them I told God I said Lord I'm tired of reading about sonship I want to walk in the reality of it where everything about my life is a message that reflects Christ and so the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 it says the earnest expectation of creation are waiting for not everybody you know we always jump around and say my generation is waiting you better find out whether your generation is waiting for you or you are the one who is waiting for a savior the Bible says the endless expectation of creation is waiting for what the manifestation of these sets of people these people who are not only born again but are full of the word men who know the word men who understand the word and men who have committed their lives to obey the principles of the word men who understand the place of intimacy with the holy spirit men who understand the laws of the anointing they understand how to bring the atmosphere of heaven into the lives of people at that point you become a blessing listen you cannot help anybody if you are like them you can't help the poor by being one you can't help the sick by being one you can't help the oppressed by being one. It is only when you are out of a system that you can help those in that system. You can't help a depressed person when you are depressed. You can you have to come out. That's why the Bible says, Come out from the among them and be ye separate. Hallelujah. And the Lord desires for us to step into sonship the bible says that there is a bondage of corruption upon our generation and it says only the sons only these sets of people they may not be many the great man of god calls them the remnant they may not be many how be it they are the ones who have refused to bow to the gods of the land they are the ones who have refused to bow to the systems they are the ones who have refused to bow to the golden image and they have said lord i will stay i will stay in the secret place i will allow myself to be built sons even when men are calling you great man of god you thank them with one hand and with the other hand you open the door to your secret place and rush back and say lord i know i'm great but maybe not great enough yet huh. and you stay in the secret place and there is an interest of the spirit and sometimes people look at you and wonder they say what are you still looking for what do you want to become you want to be disappearing from one place to another if it's a requirement to shake your generation then it's relevant to stay until you have it listen when you stay and you are prepared I tell you the truth when you step out you will not be ashamed I told God something I said Lord never let me step out of a boundary you have not opened for me keep me draw my ears do anything you do to keep me there but when the door is open never let me stay push me till i go out the lord is making us here friends there is a making of sons this word if you are a believer this must become your active partner the bible is not i'm not just talking of uh, inspiring women or um what's the name every day with jesus or rhapsody of realities or whatever it is there is a place for those devotionals but i tell you the truth you need more than it satan is doing more than devotional you must prepare because kingdoms there will be a clash of kingdoms and hear me friends satan is not folding his arms look at the people in the world they are becoming more spiritual by the day they used to hide it before but now it's not hidden again businessmen are not hiding the issue of being spiritual again and god is sending you to the business world and all you think is read books about finance you better take this and let it be your friend Instead of buying timberland, buy a concordance. It will teach.
you the principle to own one of the company if you want to listen friends the difference between successful people and failures is that successful people delay their gratification now and get the things that are buy the truth it didn't say rent it buy it a lot of us like i will buy the truth buy tapes buy books sit with the world for those of us who are students you finish your exam sit with the world sit with the world this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shall meditate during day and night that thou mayest be careful to observe all that is written therein he said then not before not during then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and thou shall have good success stay with the word write a list of the areas where things are not working accept responsibility and say lord my faith is not working i'm tired of lying faith part of your study what again you can't pray for people to be filled with the holy spirit say i'm tired i need to know the principles write it and stay the trouble with many believers is that our spiritual growth is not constructive we are not growing constructively so when you say you have grown we ask okay try to honestly tell us what are the parameters to prove that you have grown you say now i, I was i was an usher now i'm the chief usher no <laughs> it's not necessarily true it's not necessarily true there are certain realities in the spirit it's not pride there are some things that you shouldn't be struggling with at certain levels it's not pride that's the proof of growth imagine at this level of your life you're still trying to walk what do we call you you need a miracle imagine at this level of your life you are still trying to wear your clothes you don't know whether to put the, your shoe right or left are you following me how many of you have worn your shoe and say ah, ah I was able to really wear it well today no that's how it is in the spirit there are some things that should embarrass you back to the secret place you should get tired of some things and say lord i can keep running from pillar to post at least if i'm not where i should be i shouldn't be where i was and you lock yourself and say i am let there be that transition there is a kind of dissatisfaction is a holy one that draws a man to sonship and you get back and sit with the word and someone is a man of god are you around you tell him no i'm not around there are many of us that cannot switch our phone that's our spiritual limitation you look it looks as if your phone it will pinch you anything god gives you that you cannot lay aside for where you are going is an idol before you got the phone you were alive lock that phone and seek the word of god get a rechargeable lantern or get whatever you get and play tape and sit down sometimes you play that tape while he's pray while he's playing you are praying in the spirit and soaking in that glory come on it won't be too long it won't be too long something about your life must speak there's no secret about it there is no secret about it your faith is not working stay with the word of god listen to the messages that you can get on faith sit down see i'm teaching you how to be sons because i must apologize to you but i, I think we were talking some time ago with the pastors at home and we we men of god have not really done justice to god's people because we have not paid the price to teach them the principles what's the use if i come and stand here and I say, Stosi, stand up. This guy, stand up. And I just say, all right, everybody watch this. I just wave my hand. And somebody falls. How does that equip the people? Except you, like I did last week, trying to use it to demonstrate something. Are you following me? See, sons are not carried away by results. When sons watch someone walking, every time I watch men of God, I'm really not looking at the results. I'm finding out my spirit is scanning through what they are doing. What Lord did this guy touch in the spirit? Hallelujah. What law is he touching in the spirit? That's how sons think. 
some of us say well god has not called me into ministry god has told me what my own call is i'll just be motivating people counsel people and so you feel there's no need the trouble is we have been made to think every time you give an unusual attention to the word ministry no no sir they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my saying do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life this is life and death my brother it has nothing to do with ministry we live in a world where until you are solidified by the word satan will eat you up and spit out your bones i've chosen to stay with the word i've chosen to i say it without apology at almost every time you come to my house you find us diligently studying students of the word nobody is carried away by ministry no students here are burden of ministry god didn't give me any burden god gave me a call people put yokes on themselves as a result of their negligence to abide by god's principles stay after me i go for the word it will make me a son when things are not happening see your finances are not working well why are you studying on relationship go and address an issue that is not working hallelujah sit down and address let me tell you something when an area begins to work in your spiritual life you are motivated to serve god better there's nothing as frustrating as every area not working in your life you just ask yourself oh, what what am i even doing if finances uh, if your finance is working and then the gift of the spirit is not working at least you are motivated one over two so you can press for the other one but where every area is a wilderness I'm trying to put something in your spirit this night that when you leave this place where somebody is distracting you from studying the word you know that is your enemy hallelujah some of you stay and when you want to study the word someone says ah we need to go and visit this so, so, so and so person and like ah it's been a while it's been a while sit with the word sit with the word that's the singular pathway to sonship Therefore, say after me, the pathway to sonship is to stay with the word, to know the word, to understand the word, and to obey the word. I have a guarantee for you. If you truly abide by these things I'm teaching you tonight, it will not be too long. I tell you the truth, your profiting will appear unto all in a way that will shock you. These are practical principles. Be a student of the word, I beg you. Day and night, sit with the word. Invest in books. Invest in materials. Some of the teachings that we have here, I think yesterday or so, in chapel, we're listening to the message last week. And I sat by there. I didn't say, I'm the one that preached it. I already knew. We sat quietly. And we're soaking into these things. That's why we give we give all the teachings from when koinonia started and and the ones we do in school is free very free all you need to do is just get it and sit with the word get other relevant teachings stay with the word if you're studying on faith concentrate on faith and get it be sure that you have gotten it then you can move to something else let your growth be constructive am i blessing you friends there are many of us that things are not moving you are just acting like things are working you know things are not working get tired stay in the presence you have prayed for over 200 people nobody has even recovered not even to get healed not even recovered don't just say well some people is like that god gives no begin to find out what is the spiritual principle that releases the anointing and then commit yourself to it 
this is what I know to be the pathway of sonship there are many things that we teach and they are equally important the place of your seed the place of service in the body and other things they are very important but the foundation the foundational pathway to sonship is to stay with the word of God know the word understand it understand it to, to understand you need the illumination of the spirit and then you also need to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise hallelujah how many of us truly want to step in the reality of sonship how many of us are trusting god to step up in certain areas of our lives there are some of us our families things are not working our families are in a mess who told you you cannot change it you can if you could not change it god will not bring you here he has brought you to let you know that you can do something about it we are going to pray so we'll round up and our prayer tonight is very simple lord i want to begin to see the reality of sonship work in my life i want to see the reality of sonship the reality please you see don't take for granted these things we are sharing they may look basic but they are powerful it's the foundation the word of god the word of god go ahead and cry say lord my life must make progress the holy ghost is in my life to bring beauty and glory go ahead and pray please make sure you are praying tonight god has committed something in our hands that will set us above the pathway to sonship is the path that stays with the word of god stays with the word of god understands god's principles is a sacrifice to bring your mind and your body under the influence of the word but when you do happy at thou because heaven becomes a reality in your life i don't care what the situation is in your life this is the solution tonight no matter how impossible it looks i have not seen a man that has given true diligence to the word the word of god will make you a son the word of god will make you a son the word of god will translate you from being a child to a son stay with the word brothers and sisters stay with the word it is life 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 the principles of the world are the principles by which heaven are designed to function by go ahead and pray and say lord grace grace i receive grace to be an ardent student of the world don't let the devil deceive you make sure you are praying grace to be an ardent student of the world go for knowledge go for knowledge go for knowledge it will place you above go for knowledge don't go for results go for knowledge the knowledge the understanding and obedience will give you every result go for knowledge not just results go for knowledge invest in the word invest in the word invest in books invest in tapes don't just buy them use them hallelujah hallelujah the second prayer point very quickly is we're going to say lord open me up to the understanding of your principles there are many of us that we have knowledge but what we lack is understanding 
we know what to do but we don't know how to do it lift up the voice and pray and say lord understanding understanding of your principles over my finances over my health over my life over my ministry over my business over my family make sure you are praying let's raise our voice tonight and pray understanding teach me how it is done not just what to do tell him lord teach me what buttons i need to press in the spirit what principles i need to keep teach me how it is done lord we receive understanding let there be a baptism of understanding a baptism of understanding Make a parianda caso pegadelegos. Understanding, 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 understanding. Hey, they are life to those who find them. It's a secret that will not fail. I assure you, it's a secret that will not fail. When you find it, you have found gold. When you found find it. You have found a treasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. The last prayer point. We are going to pray for grace to be obedient. It's one thing to know. It's one thing to understand. There are many of us that know about tithing for instance. There are many of us that understand. But there are very few of us that have been consistent. The degree to which you have been consistent is the degree to which your finances have been So, hear me. There are some issues you need to realize that there are some things in the spirit that even after you have prayed about them, until you obey the principles, you will never see the results. So, every time you are praying, God will be directing you in your prayer to the principles. While you are praying in tongues, God will show you visions of yourself obeying that word. Until you obey it, you will not see a performance. Go ahead and pray. Now, you are going to receive grace. Hear me? You know the area of your life that you need radical change. You need some things to change. You must get dissatisfied. If not, nothing will change about your life. Hallelujah. And so we are going to be praying. Mention the areas of your life. And say Lord grace to obey your word. My body will not be a limitation. Some of you will need to fast. Fasting will not kill you friends. Fasting has not killed anybody. Who did it diligently. And in accordance to God's principles. Some of you may need to go for a retreat away from people for a while some of you may need to switch off your phones for a while you will not die grace to obey in the area of my finances grace to obey your principles concerning my health grace to obey your principles concerning ministry grace to obey Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, we'll soon round up. I abide by your principles. Whether my mind likes it or not, I abide by your principles. Whether the body is ready to cooperate or not, by the grace and the power of the Holy Ghost, I bring my mind under subjection to your word. I bring my body under subjection. Body, you must cooperate with the word. Mind, you must cooperate with the word. Until my reality becomes heaven. Grace to obey. Grace to do consistent obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Not part obedience. Not partial obedience. Grace to obey the law of tithing. 
grace to be, obey the law of confessing the word. Speaking right. Prayer. Staying with God's word. Abstinence from every appearance of evil. Grace to obey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul speaking to his son Timothy said, Meditate on these things. He said, Give yourself fully to them. He said, Your profiting shall appear. I give you a guarantee, friends. For as many of you who will take these things serious, I assure you that you will shock yourself. It's not a prophecy, it's the truth. It will happen. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we thank you. In this place, make us sons. Bring us into the position of sonship. Where your word becomes a reality in our lives. Bring us to that point. Where we become the living word. Active to our environment. A revelation that God is alive. A revelation that his kingdom is superior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to round up now. It's our culture to close early. And we'll try to keep the time. But hear me. As soon as you leave this place. Tomorrow is election. Come out and vote. And then if you can't go back. And stay with the word of God. Some of you have some spare cash in your accounts. Go and buy an MP3 buy an ipod there is no spiritual investment you make that is a waste download messages download worship songs stay in the atmosphere of god's presence lock yourself in the room for one two or three straight hours praying in the spirit and there's worship playing all over no don't tell me you'll be ordinary not after that experience see the truth is we know what is required to make us great we have not just given priority to it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. 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 Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.